Welcome back to the channel, guys. I got a surprise for you today. We're starting actually a new project. Hold up. Let's talk about something real quick. So we always go out for margaritas and that's when bad choices happen, generally. <laughs> but... Not always. Usually good things come about it in our life and we have a lot of adventures based on margaritas. <laughs> margarita we, adventures we generally plan events we plan trips we do all these things we planned our pool we planned our pool <laughs> you'll see that later so fusion outdoors is a pretty generic name and i love the name but, but what we are what i do not a professional in anything but i do a lot of stuff and i bring her along and she's never said no so uh fusion outdoors i think i'm gonna get rid of and we're now going to be redneck savant. And the reason behind that is because a redneck is someone that is generally blue collar, hard worker, and savant is like a master at that, <laughs> right? Just kidding. She, yeah, she's going for her PhD <laughs> at some point, so she is the savant, but no. ultimately, a redneck savant is a blue collar worker that knows his craft and just can get through any situation and just have fun with whatever is going on. So that's why I really am proud of that name. If you've seen in some of the videos that said redneck savant production, I just love the name. I think it goes with who I am. So I am changing the name, start of this build, and you'll learn more about that build. I'm gonna add one thing. Tristan says he's not a professional because he never takes, admits the things he's good at. And he is so brilliant in all the things he figures out and finds out. If you ever have a way you can't do something, this guy will figure it out. Um, and that is being brilliant and a savant and a professional. So I disagree. Well, touche. So back to the margaritas. So we were having margaritas one afternoon at our favorite place and our waiter comes up and is talking to us about his uncle having a samurai, a Suzuki samurai, and how he learned how to drive stick shift in it. And I was like, God oh, damn, I've wanted to get back into samurais for a long time now. It's been about 20 years, almost. So when looking for a samurai, first thing that you'll see is they're really expensive. Some are stockish, some are really old. LJ20, Tracker, but if you find the cheaper ones, they need everything. Like, they don't usually have a motor, and you're still paying several thousand or a couple thousand. See this one? Well, okay, tub and parts, so you need a lot of stuff for the cheaper ones. Let's see, like 3,500, what would you get out of 3,500? It's got 33s new gears but what you get really is a nice little vehicle but this is all stock and that's about as big of a tire size i would go and the frames are really hard to deal with with all the coating that's on them so if you wanted a longer wheelbase and you wanted to stretch them you really have to get all the coating off of there and it's tough so here's the plan you guys ever heard of Aqualoo Industries? What they do is make brand new aluminum bodies, replacements for land cruisers, jeeps, samurais, and they also do other custom work. We'll take a look. So if we look at the short wheelbase and the long wheelbase, the short wheelbase is a 79.9 inch wheelbase. I'm not interested in that because I want it to look like a samurai. So if we go to the long wheelbase, this is a 94 inch wheelbase and the beauty of that is this is 94 inches already and it makes it more look like stock if you push this tire out to just the corner not getting into the corners and if i push this one out i can probably get a 105 inch wheelbase and it will still look like a samurai and the plan is is when i order this body uh they are going to not have a gas filler because that's to be determined and they're not going to cut these wheel wells out so when i get it it's going to be received kind of like just aluminum like this and like this and then i'll determine the wheelbase and what looks right and what size tire i get away with 
the plan is for a 40, but I'm not sure that we're going to be able to make that happen because I just, I don't want to get into the front grill or the back. I want it to still remain Suzuki Samurai. So if you look here, it's not cheap, but it's brand new. And back to what I was saying about looking for an old Samurai is they're usually rusted or they just need everything. So instead of buying a used one and replacing everything, I'm just going to start fresh. So this, I'm going to get the brand new body, fenders, grill, doors, tailgate, all that. It's all going to be brand new. Think out the door shipped, it's about eight grand, but it's all brand new stuff. And so here's what the body will look like when I get it. And then here's, there's not very many customer photos, and actually I've not seen one that I actually really like. But anyways, the plan is to use uh, the body and make my own frame, so everything's brand new. Little history on my previous fab experience, it was about 20 years ago, just after my older daughter got born, about 03. I worked at a fab shop here in Burbank called 4 by Doctor. And I was into two-wheel drive pre-runner stuff at that time, but the guys while working there were all into rock crawlers. So my buddy Howard talked me into going to the Rubicon, and I fell in love after that. So while I was working there, I switched to like building 4x4s, and budget would not allow a Jeep. So I went for the Suzuki Samurai route, and there was really no YouTube to promote my build and so on. So the only way to do that was to get into magazines and project everything on Pirate 4x4 was huge. So working at 4x Doctor for a while, I got to meet a few guys that were editors for four-wheel drive and sport utility and just hit them up and got to working with Christian Lee. Got some axle gears, got, got a few things to get started. Some bead locks, just little things. And then finished the project, I don't know, a couple years later. And it was 15 inch stretched on leaf springs. It was a really fun build, but you know, to be honest with you, my kids were young. My second one hadn't even arrived yet. And there was just not a lot of time, and I cut corners because I wanted to go off-roading. So fast forward. Before we fast forward, here's just a couple clips out in the field. Thought you might enjoy them. So a couple years down the road, I was looking for a new project, and I fell in love with this tin top. All the windows were in. There was very little damage, and I picked it up for $300. But mind you, this was 20 years ago. This is on Pirate 4x4. You can check it out. It's still on there. Lots of good info. And show you kind of where it ended. This is kind of its last final picture right here. That's kind of where I left it off. Uh, me and the wife were having a very good time with each other. So ended up selling the damn thing and never finishing it. A local guy actually picked it up and kind of redid a lot of stuff. I don't know the status of it today, but point is, I was out for so long on these builds, and my new wife just lets me kind of have fun with whatever hobbies I want, so I guess no time better than now, right? We're going to be picking up the first part just because I found a deal on Marketplace, and I'll show you that. Alright guys, so this is what I picked up, Dana 60s. I know you might be thinking, like, what the hell are we building? You're usually like a fisherman water guy these are non-built dana six they're fully stocked but all the seals everything's good i got them for a score so i just picked them up i wasn't planning on picking up axles just yet for this project but i figured why not since i got such a good deal and i also don't have anything to get a mop up here i had four guys lift them on here with me so i picked up my buddy's cherry picker and we'll get them off there one man show so we'll see how that goes all right we're gonna get those axles unloaded i saved you the boring time of getting them unstrapped got a lot of shit in the driveway so 
Basically, you gotta move the sea dew out here, bring the cherry picker, assemble it, remove the axles, move them behind the sea dew, and then move the sea dew back. You get the point. We'll go from there. All right, got the sea dew moved. That sucked. Got the OSHA approved footwear. Remove the axles over here. I know we got that. That wasn't totally OSHA approved, but nonetheless, we got that one. That was the heavy one. You know, don't underestimate yourself what you can do on your own. I'm a lone wolf in general. I try to include people as much as I can, but that was a feat. I think the front one's 650 and the back one's probably 250, 300. I don't know. Doesn't matter. Got it off the trailer. Now let's get the rest of this place back in order. done if all that didn't make you a man then do it twice that's all i'm gonna say have a good night Under.